North London Tottenham, home to one of the most ethically diverse areas in Europe and also home to one of the most profound football clubs in the world. This area does not fall short of charisma or pride. Tarnished by its controversial past and plagued by its lack of opportunity, residents really do represent the flowers through the concrete and stand for nothing but unity. The Welcome to Tottenham project marks a new glance at the area of Tottenham and North London as a whole. The investment into the area due to the new Tottenham Hotspur Stadium has residents concerned that gentrification will dilute the cultural identity of Tottenham. The aim is to gather an external look at Tottenham through a creative lens, creating art that captures Tottenham in its purest form and acknowledging that there is character and charisma in the people and streets of North London. Welcome, Welcome to, to Tottenham. Tottenham. Um, I thought it was just good to see a project that was looking at an area and looking at an authentic representation of an area. Um, especially when I heard more from you about it, I think that um, I definitely identified that not only Tottenham but different areas in London have quite a two-dimensional representation often in mainstream media and it was nice that you were looking at um, a more authentic, rounded way to represent that. And I think anyone who's had any involvement in Tottenham knows that there's a lot more to say about it than just what a lot of people see. Um, for me it was like it was a chance to explore a part of London that I didn't really go to and see another community because you can get really lost or like feel very safe in staying in just where you live and getting to know everyone in your area but you start to understand that like London as a whole is a community and you'll find things that you thought were only in South you'll find the same thing in North, but with brand new people that you can talk to. Um, I've been going around Tottenham taking, I've been going around Tottenham taking photos, and then I've been trying to find like people to look at their characters, because I do lots of portraits, but then I was taking pictures of buildings together and then try to piece together like people and landscapes. And that. I've uh, kind of just used streets and the vibes from the streets and so just buildings, um, just the people, the atmosphere. With my work I like to let the atmosphere translate through the photo so it wouldn't have to be a kind of monumental piece or an iconic building, it can just be any building but as long as the atmosphere is translated through that then that's good for me. Um, ooh, so mainly like the, the sort of bait stuff obviously, so like things like Seven Sisters Road, um, I was thinking of incorporating Chick King because you know that's like legendary, like legendary chick shop. But um, I'm not sure. I feel like I may add it in. Yeah. Um, and obviously the Snell Memorial. That's yeah. The Snell, the Snell is like iconic, like iconic Tottenham. Up until recently, it was just about the London riots. Recently, I've learned a lot more. It's a, a very open-minded area, and um, you know, for this area, for example. You have a lot of young creative people here um, and you know a lot of people really working hard at what they do for the love. It's got a lot of hidden gems. That's one of the key things I've learned about Tottenham. It's not as scary as people think it is. Like even me doing this project, my sister was worried about me coming here, taking photos and walking around because she has this idea that you can walk on the street and just be attacked or a gang member will approach you or something like that. So I've learned that it's not that, not that scary. Um, don't believe the tabloids and don't believe what you read on, on the internet. It's real, real people live here, it's a real place. Um, I think it's a little bit sad actually if people who have been in the area for such a long time get moved out for financial reasons. Especially coming like I live in South and I'm seeing the things that I thought were only happening in little areas there everywhere else and knowing that there's that expansion and it's spreading like that is quite scary. I like the fact that they sort of modernised area so like um yeah just cleaning things up a bit like for example with Hackney as well they they gentrified the hell out of that um, but I like the how I don't know yeah how things are a bit different a bit calmer a bit cleaner I have two views I think for the most part it's negative for those who um are at the lower end of the bargaining power. Those, as I said, who don't own anything, who have to move, um, um, not out of choice, but out of uh, circumstance. Mm. I think it's a tricky one, because obviously there are some there are some upsides to it. Um, there are some positives that come with that, but I think obviously the massive downside is a community will often start getting displaced and priced out of an area. Um, and that was something 
also that um, I find kind of important to acknowledge when you're looking at an area is that when people, ha when there hasn't been interest in an area, there's been a community there that have been building something um, like kind of sustainable and a, a community space for young people. Um, and I think that uh, that should and isn't acknowledged, should be acknowledged and isn't acknowledged enough when, when this stuff happens. But I also think it's good because it develops the area um, and that people ne are never told the full truth about what's happening to their own community or you know their own area. They're, it's sugar-coated for them to think that it's a step up where sometimes it's just a step to the side or even backwards. Council Estates in Tottenham creates friendships and communities, something that local authorities label as gangs. High-density social housing establishments such as the Broadwater Farm Estate creates isolating environments, a byproduct of the stigma attached to the council housing. For those that live on these estates, friendships can be more vital than family, as dysfunction and deprivation are something that these people can relate to way too often. I have fond memories of Broadwater Farm growing up as I used to visit my cousins there. I just saw them as kids growing up in a concrete jungle. Councils would probably describe the youth in these estates as problematic or disobedient, but nonetheless, they are a product of their environment. An environment that was created. An environment they hardly see anyone make it out of. Music is something that the youth in the Broadwater Farm Estate have used to try and change their life circumstances. Collectively, they have wrapped up millions of views on YouTube and performed at festivals such as Wireless. They refuse to be defined by the system they call home. I had a quick chat with Cash to hear his views on Tottenham as a whole. To be honest, bro, um, they should be helping like, the youth, like, youth clubs and that, like, making it a better place that like, so the youth are out here like, doing what they're doing right now, but instead they're working on other buildings and that, that's getting, keeping them on the roads and that, when they could be doing other things to improve their lives and that. Reality, I think that like, they're using this to just cover up what the area really is, like, yeah. what's really going on. Like. You know, I'm talking, but obviously I'm even talking for both of us. Like, yeah. Music, obviously right now we just, we're just working, like, we take it serious. That like, is basically our career, isn't it? But we go to, we've been to bear shows, like, um, where do you go and think? Do that again? Don't, ah. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, is that wireless? Yeah, wi like, see, wireless, that. Like, it's a mad man team Kush app perform on the stage and that. You get me, just positive things that are coming out of it. Bare people yeah. singing off. Yeah. yeah. There's youngers that I've seen that's so good at football, but then they're not doing nothing with it. Like, mm. they're just out on the road on whatever they're doing, innit? Yeah. There's people that's doing music and they're trying to make, do something positive with it, but mm -hmm. people ain't trying to see the positive, positive thing innit? about it. Yeah. yeah. London is home to some of the most eclectic sounds in the world. From jungle to garage, from garage to grime, we have always had our own unique sound. Music is the youth's language. Whether it was in the under-18 raves or blazing from your phone on the back of the 279, UK music gave us a sense of pride. Tottenham was home to some of the greatest MCs to ever grace the scene. They led the way for the likes of Abracadabra and Evelino and is real proof that greatness can rise out of Tottenham. I met up with Chris J, founder of Heat FM, to find out just how influential Tottenham was to the UK music scene. The white guy is never, never the gangster. Yeah. He's always a donut smoking too much weed, skinny as hell because he don't even eat. And when he does eat, he eats chicken and chips. Yeah. yeah. But this is a different kind of fairy tale. This is a different story over here. The white guy was at a percent of it trying to bring something into the black community. Mm. You understand me? And, and, and that is a... I think that's why it worked. We was always on, dead on at six o'clock because I wired my transmitters into the uh, the light system of the yeah. tower block. Yeah, so when the block lights come on at six o'clock, yeah. my ass is still sitting at home. I ain't got to move nowhere. So you listen to the radio and it'd be like, shh, mm. complete quietness. Mm. Like what I did is come over here to be with the first, my, my first children's mum yeah. was here. And um, I got all the equipment. Um, don't ask me what I was doing in JA, but um, I got all the equipment when I come back, <laughs> financially sound. Um, and yeah, I got the equipment and 
there's a tower block down the road which is Warren Court. That's originally where Charlotte Fort, where the transmission site was. Because obviously, with your research, that's where a lot of transmitters. Yeah. They tried to seize a lot of transmitters. We used to run the DTI off the block, yeah. but that used to create us problems as well because then they would come back with armed police, and then it's a holy excitement for nothing. But they never found this studio. They never found us in the time that we were broadcasting. They never found us because. I used to climb on this roof and you use a microwave link which is very hard to find because of a line of sight mm -hmm. you have to have a line of sight to it so just imagine this is coming across the top of these roofs here it's going across this it's going across a whole one-way system at that time yeah. yeah and part of the reason Ofcom didn't like coming down here was because when you got stuck on that one-way system it was a bit emotional in the sense where you could be there for two three hours in traffic jams okay. so they didn't really mess with us because we were positioned in a real good spot mm -hmm. Listen, I'm from South. Yeah. I felt the wave coming in from South. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that would try and own this because they're from a particular area, mm -hmm. yeah? I was living in Tottenham mm -hmm. when I started Heat FM, mm -hmm. all right? All of my DJs at the beginning of Heat FM were coming from oh, South. Yeah, and it's when the North London guys caught on and was like, we want to try and get into the music thing. How are we going to do that? Yeah, and then there was more, because I had people over here as well that were that were doing bits and, on real low levels. Mm -hmm. But the minute we was like, and people, then we ended up having, it was such an eclectic mix mm -hmm. of people coming to this radio station. Like you had, like, Sui, I got a big up Sui, a guy called Sui. He, um, he took the phone call from Dizzy. When Dizzy was nobody, he was just a young lad from the middle of Bo mm -hmm. who had something to say and wanted to do this mic thing. Yeah. East London stations, you know, for me, the way I saw East London stations at the time, I live in East now, so it's not, I'm not on this end of things, I'm a grown ass man, yeah. so just keep it real, yeah? East London, these were owned by black males. The majority of them station was promoting this. We got the Kelly, all type the Chantel, easy, yeah, bubbling, bubbling, bubbling. Because they were dealing with them white clubs in Essex, yeah. So that's what they were trying to deal with, Loughton, Essex, and all that. That's what they were trying to appease. That's what they were trying to. They were trying to please them man in there because you can't play black music in a white people club and expect it just to say white, yeah? Um, it will get integrated because people will say, oh yeah, you should come down. And North London, it, it, for me, the beautiful thing with North London, it's not an ends thing. My station is everywhere, yeah? My station is London. It's great that so many artists are using music as a way to change their surroundings. But for most, the harsh reality is that any hopes they have of living a better life is clouded by the lack of support from borough councils. Tottenham will be home to a new Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in 2018 that boasts over 61,000 seats, nine floors and a contract with the NFL. The stadium will create jobs for Tottenham residents and put Tottenham on the map as an international tourist spot. But unlike the new stadium, the truth about the project is not shiny and transparent. The new stadium agreements will displace thousands of people currently living in the surrounding area. I stumbled across a campaign called Stop HDV, which stands against the Harringay Development Vehicle, which will see Harringay Council partner with Lend Lease to fund the regeneration of the area surrounding the new stadium. Paul and Gordon, two drivers of the campaign, agreed to sit down with me so I could find out more. Yeah. On the high road. Yeah, on the high road, 12 o'clock tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, that would be sweet. Um, yeah, so I'll literally, yeah, I'll literally just be asking you some questions about the campaign, trying to get some awareness so that a younger audience knows what's going on in Tottenham. Um, so yeah, no, th thank you so much. Okay, take care, have a good day. Okay, bye. Got it, we got it. <laughs> we got it, sick. It's not what they call transparent, I mean, Hardly anybody knows about the detail because it's all been done in a cabinet. It's never even been a full council. Okay. So most of the people in the borough, yeah. unless they go to the cabinet website, how many people do that? Mm -hmm. You know, don't know anything about it. Yeah. And that's, okay. that's, that's how they get these kind of things through yeah. without much scrutiny. Okay. We want an alternative strategy, don't yeah. we? So rather than wiping out communities, rather than disrespecting the poor, and, and needy people, we need yeah. to have an inclusive society mm -hmm. in which you have 
council housing, which you invest in it properly and don't make it look like a public slum. Yeah. And, and then which you, and which you invest in communities as well. So, yeah. and, and that could be a fantastic future. And, and the struggle for that is going to be a fantastic yeah. future. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, because I just feel like instead of them fixing the problems that they already have, they're building on top of them. And it doesn't really make sense to me because it's not, you have to think about the people in an area, not just the infrastructure and the investment. Yeah. Everybody can come in this toilet. Yeah. Oh, they come in here. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Things have all gone wrong in terms of the relationship between property developers and the public sector. So the property developers yeah. are making public policy. Yeah. When you read a Harangay document, I mean, it, the most recent ones are written, written by Lendis, which is a property developer. Mm -hmm. Before that, they were written by estate yeah. agents. And if, yeah. you're, if you're asking a estate agent to write, to write your housing policy, yeah. they say we need higher and higher house prices and higher and higher rents and everything will be marvellous. Yeah. Because what's, that they get, what they're forgetting about is the fact that, that People, most people in, in this borough don't have savings. They can't afford yeah. private private rent. They can't afford yeah. private ownership or shared ownership, which is what they're building, yeah. etc. So that all those issues get forgotten about, and they will be forgotten about unless people like us and you start shouting about yeah. it. Okay, so I've just met up with Paul and Gordon from the Stop HDV campaign. It's basically a campaign that's sending Harrogate Council to court because they're trying to privatise £2 billion pounds worth of property in the area because of that stadium over there, Tottenham Hotspurs. It was really interesting to find out um, some of the things that they said, like the fact that Harrogate Council actually gave money to Tottenham Hotspurs. To me, that doesn't make sense when there's so many issues arising in Harrogate Council, whether it's education, whether it's housing, whether it's social care. It just doesn't make sense to me. Like, money can't be the final like the final thing when it comes to every decision that's made when it comes to people's lives it doesn't make sense to me um but yeah like i'm really glad that i met them and um it was a really insightful interview to know that these things are happening so close to home and like there's a lot of people that live in these estates that are going to get knocked down and they don't even know that their houses are going to get bulldozed soon or hopefully not um but yeah no it was great meeting them guys stop hdv stop hdv <laughs> There is so much emphasis on moving out the hood, but why do we never think about investing into our own areas? Tottenham is filled with character and courage and it sure is worth fighting for. This area situated in North London has managed to influence and touch people all over the world. The media may label it notorious, but we call it magical. Nowhere else would breathe such strong minds and determination. I see ghetto as a term of expression, not a measure of intelligence. So let's embrace its flaws and celebrate our wins because this is us. Welcome to Tottenham.